be right Clear indications that telling them it's time to change. All colors, shades, angles, and perspectives can be overwhelming in our present world of information overload. This, this is, is introducing Ground, Ground Zero. Zero. Ground Zero is a current affairs discussion phone-in program covering topical issues in the polity. The program is a platform for an in-depth analysis of trending issues by professionals, authorities in various fields, analysts, and key actors in the polity. Ground Zero gives the listener an opportunity to contribute to the discussion via phone call, SMS, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. From the conservatively serious to the ridiculously funny, Ground Zero accommodates them all. Professionals, urban contemporary businessmen and women, policy makers, public service workers, students, artisans, traders, and the in-between. Ground Zero comes up on Tuesdays from 5 to 6 p.m. and Saturdays 4 to 5 p.m. Ground Zero. This program is exclusive to Invicta 98.9 FM. Tune in. Another lovely Tuesday evening, and you are right here tuned to Invicta 98.9 FM. It's time for the Never Dull Moment program on radio, Ground Zero. Ground Zero is a program that's designed to bring up topical issues in the polity. And with our guests and analysts in-house, we try to uh, explain these things and have a clearer or better understanding of all of them. And today, it's not going to be different because I have... A full house. When I talk about a full house, I mean a full house in its true sense. That's with about five or six pe people in the studio with me. You should know that indeed it is a full house. And what are we going to be talking about today? We'll be talking about something that concerns everybody. And you need to know very much about all of these. But first, let me tell you how you can be a part of the program Ground Zero. You can go to our various social media handles, starting from Facebook. That's at uh, Invita FM Kaduna. That's the Facebook page where you can see the post. The post is already up. And also follow our live video feeds. You can also go to the Ground Zero program specific Twitter handle where we are also streaming the live video on Twitter. And it's at Ground Zero 989. Ground Zero 989. And of course, you can go to the Invicta FM Ground Zero handle, which is at Invicta FM 989 on Twitter. Of course, my personal handle is a his underscore peacemaker. A his underscore peacemaker. And with that, you'll be able to contribute. And of course, at some point in the course of the program, we would open up the phone lines where you can. Drop your messages, call us, and uh, let us talk about it. Today, on Ground Zero, we'll be looking at disaster risk governance and open response to recovery framework. Disaster risk governance and uh, open response re and uh, recovery framework. This is what we'll be looking very, very uh, mouthy. <laughs> But the experts that I have in the studio, they'll get to break it down so that everybody can understand what we are talking about. But I know that you can pick out disaster, you can pick out risk, you can pick out response, and you can pick out recovery. We'll knit all of this together and you have a better understanding of what we'll be talking about on the program today. And of course, we have guests in-house, and uh, uh, both from the government angle and of course from the civil society and uh we'll all be looking at it together let's introduce the guests that we have i start from the executive secretary of the state emergency management agency sema and the person of abubakar hassan you're welcome to ground zero and you're welcome to invicta fm good afternoon listeners out there all right I also have with me in the studio this evening 
a gentleman engineer from the Kaduna State Road Agency, Kadra, in the person of Engineer Ibrahim Balarebe. Engineer Ibrahim Balarebe, you are welcome to Ground Zero. Yeah, oh, good evening, all. Thank you. All right. I also have with me someone from the civil society, not just one person, but two persons. I would have loved to call her her normal title, but I know she does not want me to call her her title. But I will still call her. She's the Saronia Civil Society, Saronia Environment, in the person of uh, Gloria Kasangbulus. She, you will get to meet her in the course of the program. I don't want to talk more than that. Okay, we also have uh, another gentleman from the Civil Society Organization, and. Uh, also, one working around environment in the person of Dangwa Abbas Danjuma. Danjuma, you're welcome to Ground Zero. Thank you very much, Ayiz, and good evening to the listening public over there. Okay. Also, we have someone from uh, Agri, well, uh, uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture. He's also here today so that we we'll talk all about all of these issues together because like i said at the beginning of the program when you hear of disaster hear of risk hear of response and hear of recovery you know that it's a whole lot of things and uh it also uh is something that will touch on our survival okay i hear i have with me in the studio an assistant director Irrigation from the Ministry of Agriculture in the person of uh, Malam Khalid. Malam Khalid, you're welcome to Ground Zero. Good evening, everyone. All right. So, basically, those are the guests that we have in the. What we need to do is to move away from talking about disaster to understand this in its proper perspective. I think the, the, the most important is for you to look at what exactly leads to a disaster understand and then why would it lead to that disaster and then it gets to unsettle everybody i think the most uh important uh way to look at it is to look at hazards mm -hmm. as a whole because it is the hazard that creates the potential for a disaster so i think it is best uh to simplify to say communities around the world for example also in kaduna state should be looking much more in terms of what are those hazards which we cannot do away with because we keep developing we keep expanding so the the fact that hazards will continue to be with us yeah you understand it's just a normal thing but what are these hazards that are within us yes. you understand there's nothing like a natural disaster but natural hazards yes we can run away from natural uh, hazards or self-induced man-made hazards but we can do we can we have a, a role to play in ensuring that we identify these hazards so we know them then exactly what we need to do as people that live within these hazards to be able to protect ourselves against what the impact of these hazards that are either naturally induced or that are man-made induced so it's in the simple term it is about what is there in front of us that is or has the potential to what lead to a disaster and uh, there are so many of them for example the natural ones for example flooding mm. you understand because flooding at the end of the day cooled or has the potential to lead to what economic losses for example yeah. in agriculture yeah. where lands uh, i mean farmlands of people are being swept away by by flood um we have for example a, a human induced issue around understanding what level of energy that comes into homes because you hear once in a while people talking about the fact that there is a fire in, in, a, in a house and all you think about is the fact that oh it's from an electric uh uh fault you understood the level of energy the quality of course of those items that were put in the house where energy gets tran transmitted because before you even use it so now quality comes into play so those are human in these issues that are hazardous that could actually look toward the potential for loss either of lives or property so in proper perspective i think what we need to be looking at is what are those hazards that are within us that will continue to be with us but that we need to, what do we need to do as a people 
to begin to identify these hazards, okay, the potential that they all have that would lead to a disasters at the end of the day, and look for ways as much as possible to reduce our vulnerability to those hazards. Yes, reducing our vulnerabilities to those hazards is very important because just like you pointed out, whenever it happens, it would lead to economic loss, it would lead to loss of lives, it would, in short, devastate uh, people, their livelihood and all of that. Now, you know, while I was introducing the guest, when I mentioned CADRA and the Ministry of Agriculture, many people will be thinking, what do they have to do with this? But unfortunately, sure. <laughs> I know they have a whole lot to do with it because uh, the job that SEMA does, I'm sure it's not SEMA that does it alone. It's in, um, it's in collaboration with so many organizations and all of that. But SEMA as a focal point in managing disasters and all of that in the state will take the lead. Now, I would like to come to Kadra, uh, Engineer Ibrahim Balarebe. We just talked about, uh, we, we've gotten a broad perspective to what all of these uh, hazards could be. And uh, how do you think, or what role do you think your agency has to play in risk reduction when there is a disaster? Or in generally mitigating against disasters happening in our environment. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, good evening. First of all, I would like to thank the executive governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasri Arafai, for giving us opportunity to, to display our talent in terms of engineering profession. Uh, I think it was 2019 that the Malang, Governor Malam Nasri Arafai introduces uh, Uber Renewal project yeah so in this uber renewal project there are so many components under it and we the cadre we are responsible of roads so in preventing this disaster we took everything into consideration in constructing our road to avoid these uh, disasters okay i'll give you an example yes please uh uh, with this uh, Uber Renewal Project road component, you know, we have to, one, identify the road, uh, two, what are the, on the road, example, you know, there are some majors like uh, in driving safety, uh, in some of our people used to dig uh, road for either uh, services like water yes, and yes. this uh, and even communication create the natural bombs yes yes yes, 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 yes. so we, we introduces uh, what we call uh, service docks okay service docks whereby during construction we provided something that they will rely on so that when they want to lay their cables or pipes they will just follow those docks they don't need to break the rules okay, okay yes okay, yes okay, and okay, another okay. thing uh, for fire services, you know, yes. they, they need water. Yeah. Uh, they to, in all our roads, mm. this Uber Renewal Road, we, there is... Uh, uh, the fire hydrants. Yes. Water hydrants. We, uh, they, a strategic location. Yes, yes. We took all that into consideration. Okay. Yes, yeah, these are the, some of the factors that we look okay. in. Okay. Okay, so you are saying now that uh, Kadra in the design and construction of roads took into consideration the fact that hazard may happen yes to reduce any risk that may possibly uh, lead to escalation and even when it happens how to quickly intervene in uh, resolving all of these issues yes. okay we'll come back to you let's now move to another vital area and uh, that is agriculture we know that um when we talk about agriculture we are talking about a whole lot of things one Food security is there, livelihood of people is there, and even providing jobs for people and all of that. Now, what are the possible um, risks or hazards that may come out under the program of the Ministry of Agriculture? And what are those measures that has been put in place by your ministry to mitigate against some of this? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, the aspect of agriculture is a large aspect. It involves crops and animal productions. 
So with regard to these uh, crops productions, uh, what the uh, what the agricultural sector is doing is to sensitize the people on toward whatever activity they will do. They will do it perfectly against any eventualities. For example, if you look at the uh, plot actions that affect most of our farmland, it is Padama land. This Padama land, they are very close to source of water, either a river or a dam. So naturally, anybody that's, uh, anything that is done at the banks of the river, closer to the river, it is uh, standing at a risk. So we synthesize our people that uh, they should not go beyond certain area. Okay. Because in the upland, whatever comes out after two or three days, the water may treat back. And you find that it will not cause a lot of havoc. But in the, sometimes we know after eight years, this thing normally comes. Mm. So we advise them to please make sure they do what is expected of them through sensitization. So the uh, chairman of the uh, state emergency uh, management agency. And so having there made um, the, uh, the community feel that, okay, there is, um, there is hope for them and um, in terms of disasters because the uh, communities have put in quite a lot of efforts, but of course their efforts are limited in whatever they do. It could be in terms of funding, but the good thing is the community is still willing to put in the little they have, even in terms of uh, manpower, even in terms of uh, cash to ensure that um, they get what they need or whatever um, uh, measures need to be put to address disaster. So um, yesterday having the deputy governor was actually a plus and we were able to even present some of the, some pictures of communities that we have actually visited. And so for us this year, since the team is in disaster risk governors, is to see how we can um, foster that relationship between, between community and the government. Yes, I'm sure you've had that and you have a better understanding of all of this. Now we are going to take a commercial break and when we come back, we will come back to the Executive Secretary where we'll be looking at how SEMA has been carrying out its mandate on improving safety, how effective its framework within the state has been and how involved communities are in emergency management and much more. That would be just after these messages, the program is Ground Zero on Invita 98.9 FM. And uh, we are looking at disaster risk management and uh, how we all can have a better and clearer understanding of all of these. Welcome back from that commercial time out. You're still listening to Ground Zero right here on Invicta 98.9 FM. And uh, today on the program, it's a full house. And uh, we are basically looking at the disaster risk governance and open response recovery framework. And with special emphasis on the International Day of Disaster Risk Reduction. And uh, like I said, we have the Executive Secretary of the State Emergency Management Agency with us in the studio. And we've been looking at some of the things that they do, but I do want him to help us in summary, because we are really running out of time. Look at how SEMA has been carrying out its mandate in improving safety of the good people of Kadnasi from hazards and potential risk in the state. Now, how effective is the framework within which the state is ensuring prevention, mitigation, and preparedness response, recovery, and reconstruction against emergencies and disasters in Kaduna State? <laughs> Very long. All right. Uh, business, meaning that it is everyone's responsibility. So as uh, an agency with that mandate to coordinate uh, all uh, emergency management activities in Kaduna State, I will say uh, to us what's most important and critical is uh, the fact that we know that because it is everyone's business, 
Sema alone cannot do it. Yes. Okay? And that's why we have that mandate that says we coordinate. To coordinate, uh, what we need to do, or what we've been doing, is foster that spirit of collaboration, okay, between all uh, both state actors and non-state actors, okay? Uh, while talking about the hazards around us, we talked about the roads, we talked about flooding, that's water, we talked about fire, and so on. And so. We talked about the environment. So now looking at the state actors, in Kaduna State, for example, we, knew, we know that it is important that for us to be able to push uh, the agenda around uh, hazard mitigation, okay, or disaster mitigation, we need to collaborate with uh, agencies like CADGIS, agencies like Kasubda, agencies like uh, KEPA, the Ministry of Agri. These are all state actors that SEMA, you understand, through the linkage uh, between the, those in the agencies, you understand, push that agenda in terms of what we need to do to be able to mitigate disasters around us. So collaboration with state actors is key because we cannot do it, do it alone. We need to do it by collaborating with what other state actors or other agencies of government. But coming to the non-state actors, we have the civil society, for example. We have communities, for example. Like uh, you heard from um, Gloria earlier when she said uh, we had the opportunity of going into communities in uh, Chiku local government and uh, Kaduna South local government. We went there because we felt the need to really drill down the message down to the bottom line. And what do I mean by this? Um, disasters always will happen in a community. Okay, so meaning that we cannot in isolation be dealing or taking uh, decisions about communities without involving the communities. Yeah. One thing is key, sustainability of whatever actions we're going to take to mitigate these issues. And so um, from time, from experiences, you know that if you want something to be sustainable, you need to bring in those who actually these issues really impact because they understand it, they understand the impact of it on them. So we move in, in terms of collaboration with the non state we go in there, okay, to understand uh, the nature of how this impacts these communities, but also to get in their buy-in, to collaborate with government, to let them understand that they also have a responsibility to government, to really yeah. look inwards into their own issues, yeah. so that the government can come in, uh, collaborate with them, and be able to, what, to resolve their, their issues. And then the civil society, key, very key ally in, in ensuring because the, they serve as a linkage, you understand, between uh, the government and also the, the people out there. Yeah. So they are always there to check. They are always there to really even drill down more, much more than what possibly we will do. So they are always there. So this framework you know, is how SEMA has been able to, uh, to coordinate these uh, efforts around what disaster mitigation in Kaduna State. If you ask me how effective this has been, yeah. I will tell you this has been what rewarding and very successful. The turnout yesterday at uh, the town hall session is an indication of the success we have achieved in terms of ensuring that that process uh, of uh, collaboration has really done much. Okay, yesterday you saw highest level of governance. Yes, you understand the representation uh, of governance by Her Excellency's presence, Her Excellency the Deputy Governor. Uh, coming to that kind of engagement and spending all the time there is the greatest level of commitment you can get in terms of what government uh, is doing uh, around disaster management in the state and how important the government has taken what safety of the people and their properties within Kaduna State and then the communities. There you, we, we, you could, uh, I mean, while Gloria was talking, she mentioned the fact that we had traditional uh, rulers who also left their own domains because they felt it was important to come in and engage to collaborate against what disasters. We had people from the religious faith, uh, religious based uh, organizations who have come in there also because safety first, you need to be safe to be able to what, push whatever agendas that you have. Yeah. So safety first. And for us, that collaboration is yielding the necessary or desired results in Kaduna State. We have we, we cannot say that um, the, the, the the food is already cooked. We have just started putting the ingredients that will help us in addressing what or ensuring that the soup is cooked at the end of the day. And I'm sure the aroma that's already coming is a palatable, palatable one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me quickly come to Martins yes. now. Uh, Dangima Abbas Dangwa, mm -hmm. I want you to tell us what's the collaboration between 
the civil society and SEMA, what has it been like? Well, um, to be candid, SEMA, SEMA had actually gone ahead of time to provide that kind of platform that allows for open response. Um, there are three strata, you know, in SEMA at the state level, there is disaster mitigation and management and mitigation platform. Yeah. At community levels, again, there is also community disaster mitigation and management platform. At uh, local government level, you also have the local government emergency management committees. In all of these framework, uh, all of these uh, committees that I'm talking about, or uh, technical working groups, it, it is a constitution of both um, state and non-state actors. All stakeholders around disaster, all stakeholders that are affected by disaster at community levels, at local government levels, and at state government levels, and at state at state uh, levels, are uh, meeting together discussing, sharing, and uh, identifying areas of need and mobilizing resources uh, side by side to achieve results. And I can say that so far, the journey has been well, well wonderful in recent time. In recent time, because uh, for, for the first time, we are now seeing SEMA really coming out from just doing the behind-the-desk work. But that, that, and then uh, SEMA is no more winning alone. Yeah. SEMA is now leveraging on most of these platforms to really drive down the message, to really get everybody uh, talking along, everybody getting involved, everybody's perspective also being accommodated because in solving the problem, you are sure that you need to the, the person who's, uh, who's, who's affected by that problem to really identify how that problem impacts on him and then you are able to uh, profile ask from him again what he feels the solutions are and also make that input, that additional uh, input to what it is that you can do. So, so far, I can say that uh, the journey has been promising because it's a work in progress. And unlike other platforms that are really um, called out around the open government partnership, I think SEMA have actually provided that kind of table where co-creation can happen. And for us in civil society, we think that these are the real ingredients that can help make sustainable whatever plans and initiative that ha we are having on ground to avert, uh, mitigate, and uh, and also respond effectively in the event of disaster. Yes, it's Ground Zero on Invicta 98.9. I still have so many questions to ask, but uh, I'll not be doing justice to the listener who is the reason why we have this program. So, it's about time we open up our phone lines. Already, we have a couple of persons uh, on our social media dropping questions and liking. 081 is the number to dial and 70 You can go to our Facebook page in Victor FM Kaduna and your comment or your thoughts. Also, you can go to ground 089 and also drop your comments and thoughts. Hello, good evening, welcome to Ground Zero. Yeah, hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, you are welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Yeah, I'm Gimba from Bapa, sir. How is work? Fine, thank you. And how is yours? I'm doing great, thank you. All right, Gimba, let's have your take. Yeah, actually, you can't talk about disaster without discussing the... Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, as an individual who understands the importance of fauna and flora, and some, some construction will need to be destruction of, of fauna and flora. Example of such is the construction that has been done in the uh, rock road or something of that nature. Okay. There are some, yeah, there are some trees there who are almost like 100 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we know that. So, to unfortunately. Hello, Gimba. Oh, uh, we lost game by. We lost game by. He was really uh, talking about something very, very important about those trees that we are lost in the course of construction, constructing those roads in town, part of the urban renewal. Well, I wouldn't know what plans are on ground for those particular trees. Well, let's take all the calls. We'll respond to all of the questions at the same time. 081-40,989 and 070-87-800-989 are the numbers to die to add your voice to the conversation. Meanwhile, let's quickly look at this message on our Facebook page. It's from Kayo Day at Day Bitter. He's saying that my question 
rather than giving relief materials to flood victims who have their houses beside the river in every rainy season, what stops the government from relocating them to a safer region or to completely ban building of houses by the river bank? This is coming from Comrade Kayode Adebite, 081-40,989 and 070 Eight seven eight hundred nine eight nine are the numbers to dial to add your voice to our conversation this evening. Okay, while we are waiting for the calls to come in, <laughs> okay, have this caller coming in now. Hello, good evening, welcome to Ground Zero. Hello, good evening. My name is Prince Oscar. All right, Prince Prince Oscar. <laughs> I read this program and tell one of them how to go on. The other one, the government should try just like the last man said. This country has been a country that is like a lawless country. When something happens, the first, the second, the third, the first, there should be a margin of a law of restricting people building their houses by the river bank. See, it is not every year to find out that Roma or Nema will be preparing, or the government will be preparing for relief material to give to those people. It is better, they said the English man, they prevent them from that action. It is better they prevent them from staying around the river bank. Okay. Because one, not only the life, not only the property, but the life. And sometimes you find out that the parents might like the one to get this child. They are the farm, they go to work, the little ones, the little children, they are mostly the victims. Okay. The, 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 the food crops or whatever. So I think the government should not allow restraining people or restricting people from building other people on side. That's the money that they'll be using in spending or whatever. whatever. You relocate to another place, which is better. I think uh, when the government do a mix of the guests, yeah. Uh, it's okay. Thank you for having me. Thank okay. you so much, Prince Oscar. 0814989 and 0708780989 are numbers to dial to add your voice to our conversation this evening. Oh, we lost this other call. Okay. Put the call across, ask your questions. Let's look for solutions to them. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. <laughs> Uh, we lost that one too. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hello. We seem to be having a little network glitch. The calls are coming in, but just bouncing off. 08140989 and 0708780989 are the numbers to dial to add your voice to our conversation this evening. We have another caller here. Let's find out who this caller is. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hello. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Isu Uh I'm from Kaduna. We're calling from Zaria. All right. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to really commend and congratulate the Executive Secretary, uh, not just for celebrating the disaster risk day, but for pushing for a multi stakeholder approach to addressing the issues of disaster risk in Kaduna State. Uh, that is a very commendable step, and I want to say that a lot of us now have more faith in SEMA, uh, considering that before we only believe that all they do is to share relief materials. Uh, but uh, we say that we are seeing a new direction and we hope that all stakeholders will play their own critical role in supporting the agency to ensuring that uh, we address uh, the issues of disaster risk. Uh, just to also advise that uh, we need to take this momentum in ensuring that we strengthen the relevant government institutions to take on the responsibilities of managing disaster risk and recovery. Right. Uh, so the key in doing that is by helping uh, to, to mandate institutional responsibilities. 
villages. What I mean by that is that uh, let's say these processes institutionalized, we can lie right legal frameworks and what are you and budgetary allocations. Okay. To ensure that this is delivered uh, because uh, we are optimistic for the fact that the deputy governor is the chairperson and also the deputy political is the former executive secretary. So we want to believe that there is a political will to ensuring that uh, all hands are on deck and the immediate sources are located, are located towards addressing disaster risk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph Goje. I was about stopping you, and uh, because we are actually, we've actually run out of time. So let's see how we can in uh, 30 seconds each. <laughs> I'll start from uh, uh, Malam Khalil from the Ministry of Agriculture. 30 seconds. Your last word to the listener listening to you in respect of how the Ministry of Agriculture, what they are doing in mitigating against uh, disaster and reducing risk. Okay, what the Minister of Agriculture is doing, for example, we everybody knows about the cattle, men's, Fulani, and the farmers' risks. Yes. Most, this is a very, very serious issue. So now we thank His Excellency, His Excellency the, uh, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, for now trying to upgrade the grazing reserve. Okay. So that these people should be focused in an area whereby they will not disturb anybody, and then the grazing route should be yes, declared yeah. so that the farmers you know this is your area yeah. and then the the polani men should know this is their area so there will not be clash because and then there is also sensitization telling them to come together all right one to help one another and then they said they said made, uh, the state government are now embarking on many empowerment programs so that they engage the youth <coughs> from the different types of programs like the appeals like the women empowerment in poultry in there are so many things i love us uh, to continue but we're actually out of time yeah. let me come to engineer ibrahim balari from kagra uh -huh. 30 seconds uh, yes we are, uh, are you supposed to give you more than 30 seconds i was uh, supposed to give you even 10 minutes but yes, we actually run out of time. i want to answer that uh, yes that yes in respect of, of, the, of the, 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 that we are removed and uh, not returned. yes yes it's, it's not not returned uh you see mala nasura air fire has already provided all the avenue there is idc infrastructure development council which okay. everybody is a stakeholder including the environment so on and so forth yeah it's not like that it, it, then if we are not going to cut the tree there is no development yeah. you know there is some uh, projection of uh, population that yeah. is why this renewal project come into place and uh, uh, we already have uh, if you go around you see that uh, minister of environment has started planting a tree yeah. Uh, to, the last one is uh, about um, the Kadra. We have a uh, uh, road information management unit, whereby yeah. we have all we will we we have all the data of all the routes. Uh, like when the SEMA has uh, any uh, observation from our road, we'll just go to the uh, database to see the history of the road as uh, within the road corridor and prefer solution and see what is. All right. Uh, we'll come to the executive secretary now. Since we gave the other 30 seconds, we'll give you one minute. <laughs> so I truly appreciate. Wow! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, Martin, your party shots? Well, um, my party shots will just be basically to bring in the reports from the citizens. One, uh, yes, we want citizens to stop building houses on the banks of rivers. But again, they cannot stop doing so as long as uh, government layouts are not within the reach of the poor to access. One. On the second, on the second issue, on the second issue, that is the issue of road maintenance, where we have noticed that consistently people are disposing refuse into drainages, mm. and there are places where we have gone to see again that drainages are not being clearly properly maintained. You see people evacuate uh, way silt out of their drainages, put it by the roadside only for the rain to wash it back, send it back because there the is room. no collection uh, mechanism in place. So these things are very important. Back. And then there is the issue around 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 the uh, around the uh, agriculture, sir, wherein our farmers are being battled climate change, access to quality seeds, access to quality inputs is eluding them. This COVID-19 lockdown really exposed some of these challenges. 
Urea fertilizer was sold from 7,000 Naira to 12,000 Naira. We, we, we want we, to see how the state government begins to invest so much in protecting livelihoods, especially those of smallholder farmers in agriculture. And to Gloria Kazambolos, your party shots, 15 seconds. <laughs> We need to get back to the drawing board. We need to form synergies. We need to form collaboration from different NDAs and even the community. We need to work together because it is not in one man's business. All hands need to be on deck. Just like we always say when we're pitching the climate message, I'm also saying it in terms of disaster. We need all hands must be on deck. Everybody is a stakeholder and get this done. That's about the size of the program today. I sincerely want to appreciate all the guests in the studio. Malam Kale from the Ministry of Agriculture. Dr. Abbas Dangwa from the Civil Society. Um, engineer Ibrahim Balarebe from Kadra. Gloria Kassam-Mulus also from the Civil Society. And of course, the Executive Secretary of the Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency, Sema. Thank you so much for having time to be on Ground Zero. Thank you very much, Aiyi. I'll be on Saturday again for another package of the program. Between now and then, keep the dial on Invita 98.9. Like always, plant the tree today, water it, and watch it grow. May the good mighty Lord bless and keep us all.